The fourth international conference on appropriate technology extends efforts related to the basic global need of proper water and sanitation. The ongoing work in this field is seen as a process to bring the discussion and practice of what is technologically appropriate to the forefront of education, research, development, and deployment. You see, to fully embrace this concept, one must be driven by a compassion for humankind and Mother Earth. This concept must move appropriate technology from the professional and trade journals to a reality where it dominates all realms of society. This documentary is about the fourth international conference on appropriate technology, water and sanitation, solutions for a thirsty planet in Accra, Ghana. The first conference in 2004 related to land-based projects. So this was concerned uh, focusing largely on agricultural pro uh, projects, but also transportation, housing. Uh, so the second conference we focused in on health health-related projects. We had excellent presenters uh, looking at issues from malaria to HIV AIDS. Uh, the third conference, the last one focused in on energy and climate change, which is also a hot issue. So we've kind of gone around circle here dealing with the basic needs in terms of, of food and shelter and transportation, uh, health, energy, and now water and sanitation. If you take a look at the status uh, from a global context of the water and sanitation situation in the world, uh, we still are in pretty bad shape. Appropriate technology is technology to empower people. Uh, we elaborate on that, that it should be culturally sensitive, and it's important that this technology uh, is uh, economically sound and ecologically sound, uh, in that it, it has to be consistent with uh, maintaining the environment. There's a lot of concern now in terms of climate change and damage, uh, irreparable damage to the planet Earth. So we, we have to be very concerned when we look at the different technology options to make sure that it's technology that uh, doesn't endanger the planet. My presentation was about Safe Water Project. Yeah, we are dealing, um, um, I also work as a project officer with Solar Cookers International. And this is a project they have been doing in the western part where we teach people how to test water on source before they use it. Two and a half billion people on this planet are without a sanitary toilet. And then when we talk about the development impact and the development efforts of various NGOs, multilateral agencies, government agencies, and so forth, uh, they have been tremendous. Uh, over the past 20 years, almost 800,000 water points have been installed in sub-Saharan Africa by various organizations, government organizations, NGOs, and so forth. But of those, 30% fail prematurely. And of the remaining, most of them fail within, the next, within a year or so. However clean it may look to the eyes, it may still have some germs which may cause diseases. If we're about really empowering people, if we're about making this a better world, we have to focus more on technology that addresses basic needs. And this is really what the span of our conferences has been focusing in on from, uh, from the basic uh, uh, land-based projects in the first conference to this most recent one where we focused on water and sanitation. And one of the things about this last one that's important to note, and both the Minister of uh, Water uh, pointed it out in a couple of the presentations, was the 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 why the extensive communities and numbers of people that don't have access to water and sanitation i mean it's over two billion people that don't have access to the sanitation facilities that we're quite accustomed to uh here in the united states and that's is this is really and in, in, to some extent criminal in that these are technologies that have been available to the broader community for you know over a hundred years. You know, we're not talking about uh, the latest computer technology or telephony or, or you know, anything like rocket science. Uh, but why aren't, aren't, why don't people, why are they over two billion people that don't have access to basic sanitation and clean water? We recruit uh, like village elders, uh, public health officers, and we get to train them because they are the people who are 
uh, who are educating the people on sanitation and water. We in Ghana are doing well uh, so far as the water sector is concerned, but we're doing badly with sanitation. And therefore there's a need for us to learn uh, the appropriate technology to be able to sustain the gains that we're making in the water sector and to try and fast track our program in the sanitation subsector. And that is why I'm here myself to learn the various experiences and technologies that have been developed by various countries and to try as much as possible to adopt and adapt them to suit the conditions in Ghana. Today's session where we had women groups coming out to um, show what they are doing okay, and comparing it to what we learned yesterday, I just realized that all these women are women who need this type of um, opportunity to learn more things because they are the pivot through which the communities are built. Okay, so this conference I think should be organized and should be expanded so that more grassroots people could be able to participate. We're looking constantly at how can we relate what we're doing as academics to practice. And this is why even some of the workshops, that were there, all of the workshops in fact, were about practice. Whether it was the workshop uh, on uh, microhydro in terms of how to use uh, develop water systems in a rural area or was it whether it was the one that of the rural women uh, in Ghana and their, and their water projects. Um, the, the, the idea is to give people exposure to real projects and such that they can maybe take these ideas and use them in other places. In starting out our conversation I thought it was a good way to set the tone with a quote from Dr. Wangari Mathai, who, as we know, is the first African woman to receive the Nobel Peace Prize, who's um, known as the tree lady who plants trees all over Kenya and all over East Africa and all over Africa now. And through that movement, she started a whole movement for democracy in Kenya by empowering the women to plant trees. And she said this, she said, we are living in a time when women's voices must be heard considered and respected at every level. Recognizing women's vital role in the environment is essential for a future of security and peace. Wanting to hear from Ghanaian women themselves, I thought it was appropriate to find some of them to speak their own voice and have their voice heard at this conference. So I organized a workshop um, of women who are doing actual work in water security and sanitation. In Ghana, even though women play a um, greater part in terms of responsibility in their home, you know, they are not acknowledged as such, okay? Because in, 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 the, in our homes, it's the woman who is responsible for the upbringing of children. She's, the resp she's responsible for maintaining home, the house chores. You know, she's, she's basically the one who does everything at home. But at the end of the day, um, the women are always uh, they, they are always not um, recognized. When you talk about water and when you talk about sanitation, you have to talk about women. If you're not talking about women in the equation, then you're not really talking about water and sanitation because it's the women who um, care for the children, who cook the food, and all of the, the problems that we have with contaminated water, um, whether it's diseases and sicknesses and, and, and all these issues of, of collecting water, finding water, at the core of all of those activities, at the core of all of those issues, environmental and health problems, are women. I think the conference is appropriate, knowing that uh, we are having problems on sanitation and water. In my presentation, I think it was appropriate because it will enable communities to know how to pasteurize their water and know that water may not be actually cleaned by looking at it. They have to really ensure they pasteurize the water or they chlorinate their water before they are able to consume it. Each of the conferences, while it had a particular theme, covered the, the range of, of topics and the range of sub categories under appropriate technology. So as you know, my area uh, of emphasis is, is computing, uh, socially relevant computing. Uh, so that's the particular area that I focus in on. And uh, some of my work is concerned with uh, e-governance and how to use 
uh, rule-based systems and decision support uh, to, to infuse that into uh, web-based systems uh, that will uh, uh, give the broader community, the broader citizenry, uh, uh, exposure to some of the things that are going on in government and some of the uh, options they have that apply to, to government policies and therefore uh, increase democratization. You know, by having a citizenry that's more informed, and this is very timely, uh, given that you know computing costs are down. We're tackling the digital divide. Part of uh, the concern of socially relevant computing is making uh, computers more accessible uh, through uh, both mobile telepathy and a rural telecenters, as well as public uh, uh, telecenters uh, in urban areas. Um, such that uh, the type of, uh, of work I'm doing will become more relevant as we go on. Um, we had a, a major opening presentation by uh, the Minister of, of Water and Housing, uh, 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 the Honorable Bagbin, uh, and I think this was, was really good because this shows the linkage between government at its highest levels and also the interest that he, the government has, and our conference participants have in terms of technology to empower the people. And this is the real essence of appropriate technology, technology to empower people. We believe that the appropriate membrane technology can be used to solve some of these problems. And in fact, in my first national conference on water, I demonstrated by using one and using the uh, dirty water from the gut and in front of all, pass it through the membrane and it came out clean. And uh, I saw people uh, giving me some body expressions when I was drinking it. <laughs> and I'm still alive. <laughs> the appropriate technology is context specific. As the minister so rightly pointed out, a technology that might be appropriate in Ghana is not necessarily going to be appropriate in Greenland. And we must, as uh, practitioners in appropriate technology, uh, be aware of that. I'm happy, I'm happy to be part of this conference and I hope the next time this conference would be, um, invitation would go out to, I want to see more grassroots um, organizers, community organizers participate in this conference because at the end of the day, I think they are the major beneficiaries of such programs. A lot of what is done with regards to technology is related on, to policy. You know, what is the policy on technology? As we see in this country, uh, the policy on technology, large sums of money are spent on military technology, technology of weapons. And, and this is not just the case in the United States, but a, a number of the most advanced developed countries spend a, 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 a horrendous amount of money on weapons technology in a, in a very competitive fashion. And we, we think that it's only when the public comes to address, wait a minute, you know, why are you spending a trillion and a half dollars a year on weapons research, uh, development, and deployment when two billion people uh, don't have uh, sanitation, that then when the public uh, around the world becomes more conscious of this and steps up, this is when we can have a change in technology policy. So one of the things that we're advocating is, is this kind of discussion that will hopefully lead to uh, appropriate technology protocol uh, similar to the Kyoto Protocol where it actually calls on governments and agencies to direct resources toward appropriate technology.